to show you something I did recently on my railroad. Um, I will call this the cheap ass Suco remote control for your DC train layout. I'm not gonna take credit for coming up with this. Um, I will post a link to the guy who first pioneered, the, not pioneered, but the, the thread I found on, I think it was gscale.net or gscale central that covered this. And, um, but I am gonna show you in video format what I did so you can see the benefit of this and how cool it is. So as you guys know, um, before I walk in there, so I have my train shed here coming out and right about there and right about there I have insulators so when I had my old blue streak uh, three channel three track transformer this was track one the outer track was track two and the inner track was track three so I had three power sources um, going to my three different operating areas what I've done <clears throat> I still have my blue streak but what I did is I swapped it out for this which is a 15 amp power supply. It's about $25 on Amazon. And I wired it so it's powering this DC motor speed controller. This can handle 12 to 30 watts. See right there. And at 24 volts, it can handle 200 watts, which if I did my math right, it's about eight amps thereabouts. Since the most trains I ever run are two of these guys at the same time, and my old blue streak showed an amp meter and it never broke five amps, I should be just fine. Um, obviously, <laughs> if you want to go hardcore, there is a different one of these that provides, I think, 360 watts. So if you are a guy running like four powered units and you really want that extra power, you'll want to get like a bigger power supply and a bigger one of these. I'll show you those, but this is all I need. So what I did is uh, this speed controller comes with this little remote and I plugged in these wires. Now I linked this switch yard and my outer loop are now on one circuit. So this is not no longer independent from the outer loop, but it never really needed to be, you know, um, I have these dead switches here, these little um, on off toggles that basically energize specific rails so they're all off by default and when i want to run a train i flip the switch and then that train can go come on out which uh so as long as they're all off it doesn't matter if i'm playing with the train out on the loop because it won't affect these um obviously if i wanted to just spend another 40 bucks get another one of these and i can have as many circuits as i want but i'm cheap i'm frugal so there's not much to show here power supply motor controller a couple wires connecting each, pretty damn easy, and then it comes with this remote. Now the remote does need a 23A battery, which is not included, so one of those guys. Um, I had some in my battery drawer, so it wasn't a problem for me, but I'm letting you know if you need, if you do order this, make sure you get the battery, because it won't come with one. And uh, so let me show you how this works. So on the remote, you have all these buttons. One and two basically set the direction. So in this case, I think I have number one goes counter clock or clockwise. So if I hit one and give it power, trains will back out and it'll just keep going backwards that way. If I hit number two, it'll then change to the other polarity and the trains will go the other direction. Three is a kill switch. You just hold that for a second, everything shuts down. Four and six are basically plus and minus power or speed. So let's see how this works. So I hit three. I'm going to hold six just to make sure all the um, speed is down to zero. So I'm going to hit two, and that will make the train go, hopefully, counterclockwise. Hit four. So that's the lowest power setting. You can see how it's creeping, barely moving. It also is going on to a grade. So four again. There's a little more power. Now you can see it moving. But if I hold four or tap four like six times, one, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. <clears throat> Pretty sweet, huh? So let's talk a little bit more about this remote and what it does. So five is nothing. It doesn't do anything that I'm aware of. Uh, it has this antenna that you can extend if you need to. 
Um, I have found that even with it compacted, standing about 50 to 100 feet away, this still works way over there. But some cool features. So on that motor control unit itself, there's a little dial that says delay. And what that does, if you crank it up to max, if you accidentally reverse your train, like I'm about to do here, it comes to a gentle stop and then reverses. What that delay does is it basically says, if I give an input, it will affect, it'll take into effect, but it'll take like a second or two. So again, if I hit number two to forward the train, see how it comes to a stop, then goes forward. I like that. That way you don't accidentally hit a button and it immediately like reverses your train. Now the one exception to that is number three. I'm not gonna do it right now, but if I hit number three, it will, st well, actually I will. Let me just slow the train down so it's not an abrupt stop. But let's say I have a derailment and I'm, I need to stop the train immediately. You hold three and it stops the train. No delay. <clears throat> one thing I have noticed is if I, can, if I hit number two to start the train going forward again, what it does is it remembers your speed you were at. So that's the only downside I would say is if you stop the train with number three, you have to remember, oh, hold six a little bit to bring it back to zero. Otherwise, when you initiate your startup again, it will accelerate up to whatever you had it at previously, which again, because of the delay means it won't happen instantly, but it might still be like a two second surge. And uh, depending on how long your train is, that could still derail stuff. So for 70 bucks, 75 bucks, I now have a remote control DC layout, which is sweet. You know, when I'm over there with my girls on the swing or whatever, I like running my trains, but I always hate not being right next to the power because if it derails or something what are you going to do you have to run all the way back over here now i can just hit number three or hold six for the thing to slow down so yeah let's show you so if i'm going to hold four show you how fast it can go so that's full speed pretty fast hold six a little bit slow it down <clears throat> So if I hold six, it'll come to a stop. There we go. And you know, of course, if you want it to be realistic, you could just like push the button slowly to increase the speed, slowly but surely, if, if that's important to you. Me, I'm more of a, I just like watching my trains going around in a boring circle guy, which is one reason why I've been hesitant to get Rail Pro and all those. I mean, you're talking $200 a locomotive. That's a lot of money just to watch a train go around in a circle. So this, 75 bucks per loop, man, <laughs> not even per loop because it's $75 to get started, but it's only $40 for each motor controller. So each loop you get is only gonna be another 40 bucks. Um, if you want to run bigger trains and you need more than the 200 watt unit, they do make a 360 watt version. And I think it's 50 bucks, so about 10 bucks more. Um, I don't need to, this is the most I'm ever running. And I know that this is pulling like five, six amps according to my old blue streak. So I'm perfectly content with this. But anyway, I hope that helps. If there's any uh, other cheap and frugal railroaders out there, give this a shot. I'm super stoked with it. It's only been about 20 minutes that I've had this installed, but I had to do this video to share it with you guys. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll put uh, links to all the products and stuff in the description, so you can check that there if you need to as well. Anyway, thanks, guys. Hope you enjoyed this.